Hey y'all, my name is Ashton, and today I'd like to invite you to join me in Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 6 today, as we're going to be seeing what the Bible says about having true rest. So verse 1 says, Now about that time Herod the king laid hands on some who belonged in the, to the church in order to mistreat them. And he had James, the brother of John, put to death with a sword. When he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out before the people. So Peter was kept in the prison, but prayer for him was being made fervently by the church to God. On the very night when Herod was about to bring him forward, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and guards in front of the doors were watching over the prison. A little bit of context of what's going on here. So the church had seen um, some pretty good successes. The church was kind of on this on this upward growth path, and and they were seeing just some some good successes. Uh, the Saul had who was also known as Paul became a Christian and and was doing ministry and and they were making some really good strides for the church yet then we see that the king Herod started to just lay hands on the church just to mistreat them just to, he decided to bring persecution down on the church and this James that he he takes and puts to death by by way of the sword. This was the brother of John. This was James was one of the closest disciples. Uh, we see that in Matthew seventeen one. He's one of the ones that is taken to see the transfiguration of Jesus. Um, he James was the first of the twelve to be martyred and to be put to death. Um, through persecution, um, we we know that Judas hung himself, but James was the first to be martyred for Christ of the twelve disciples. If James, who was a disciple of Christ, Jesus himself, if James, who was one of the closest three disciples to Jesus, if he was not spared, considering his position, what hope did the rest of the church have? What what? hope could we possibly have it because King Herod saw that it pleased the people that he put James to death you know what he did he said oh I'm gonna take Peter next and Peter was up Peter was thrown in prison because of Jesus's death or uh, because James death pleased the people that was kind of the it was the only reason he was he wasn't doing anything that he wasn't already doing, but it was at that point in time when Herod decided, now I'm going to throw Peter in prison. It's not much unlike today. There's The church can be doing what it's always done, and today we begin to face persecution. Today we begin to see persecution coming and happening, even though this is the even though we've been doing the same thing we've been doing for thousands of years of 2000 years worth of church history you'll see there are periods of more persecution and and then there are periods of time where it the persecution kind of relaxes a little bit it seems right now that in many places um and and this is not to discount the persecution that is continually ongoing for people who are, are on the mission field but from a from a more wide scale we're we're going to it seems like we're about to start seeing more pu persecution than ever before not because the church is doing anything wrong or because they're doing more work but because the very nature is that scripture promises things are going to get a whole lot worse before they ever get better so Peter's thrown in prison because James' death pleased the people. That's it. Peter wasn't doing anything that he hadn't already been doing. But 
prayer was being made for Peter. I think that's part of the difference right there. Prayer, fervent prayer was being made by the church to God. And at this point, the, the church is going to God about their care and their concern for Peter. They're pouring their hearts out to God. They're fervently going to God in prayer. And I think that maybe that's one thing that's lacking a little bit today. I think maybe we need to be spending even more time than we already are in prayer for the needs of ministries around the world, for the needs of missionaries and Christians, the needs of the capital C church. Not just your denomination, but the capital C church. I think we need to be lifting up those needs. Prayer was being made for Peter. And then you hit verse 6. On the night, on the very night, the very night, when Herod was about to bring him forward, he put James, the brother of John, to death by sword. This was the night that that Herod was was about to bring Peter forward. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and guards in front of the door were watching over the prison. Peter is one man. Peter was a fisherman. Peter, Peter was not going to come up with some great escape plan like you see in the movies. Peter had no hope of escape. He had no reason to believe that he would escape this situation. He had every reason to believe that death would come to him that morning, that he also would be martyred for Christ as James was. As if you continue reading on, um, we do see that an angel of the Lord appeared in in the cell and struck Peter in the side, waking him up and saying, um, get up quickly, um, gird yourself and put on your sandal. And the chains fell off Peter's arms and he left. Peter believed it to be a dream until he got out of the prison and, and God delivered Peter from that situation. I believe that part of that is because prayer, fervent prayer was being made for Peter. But if you remember when Jesus taught us to pray, we always pray and ask for God's will to be done. So we see that this was a, this was in accordance with God's will. However, Peter, at that point in time, he didn't know what God's will was, yet Peter was sleeping. The night before he was supposed to die, Peter was sleeping. Do you realize how many people on death row probably are up and cannot fall asleep the night before they know they're going to die? The night before they know there is no escape. That they know Peter was what was he was bound. He was sleeping between two soldiers. That wasn't enough. He was bound with two chains. And guards in front of the door were watching over the prison. Peter had no hope of escape. Peter only saw death in his future. Yet he was sleeping. Peter gives us this perfect example um, and helps us to see this really, really wonderful truth. We are in uncertain times. We are in times where we have no idea what's about to happen. Scripture promises things will get worse before they ever get better. But we need to realize that only true rest, only true peace can be found in Christ and Christ alone. I'd like to do something that I don't normally do for these videos. I'd like to invite you to join with me in prayer. Um, this is, I've, I've tried to share the hope of the gospel. I've tried to, to share the truth of the gospel, but today, um, and I, and I encourage you to please continue praying for, for all the prayer requests that, that we have in the prayer box, um, page, the link to the website, the, um, to be able to pray for those is down below, but I'd like to invite you to join me in, um, 
what's commonly referred to as a sinner's prayer. Now, I would like to preface this by saying this is not a magic prayer. It's not just saying these words that saves you. Because Romans 10.9 says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, so you say it. But you have to also, it says if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, then you will be saved. If you just confess it with your mouth, there is no salvation because even the demons, uh, James chapter 2 says, even the demons believe and stutter. G demons of all, of any spiritual being, we know that demons have a right understanding and a right theology about God, yet they do not submit. So just to have a head knowledge is so much different than having a heart knowledge. This is the difference between knowing a lot about a celebrity and actually knowing the celebrity. I can know a lot about my favorite actor or my favorite musician, but until I spend time with them, until I begin a relationship with them, I don't know them and they don't know me. So that's the difference there. I want you to have the opportunity today to get to know Jesus instead of just knowing about him. When I was little, it was laid out really simply in the ABC format. A, admit to God that you are a sinner. We have all sinned. Romans also says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So admit to God that you are a sinner. We need to recognize that we are sinners and that it's because we're sinners that Christ died on the cross to, so that we could see forgiveness of sins in our own lives. So admit to God that you are a sinner. The second is B. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Not just know it, but believe it with your heart. This should be something that changes the way you live when you believe something. When I sat down in, the, in my chair to start this video, I didn't think twice about sitting down in this chair because I believed that it would hold me up. Believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior and see, confess him as your, as your Savior and Lord. This is, this is not something that we're meant to keep to ourselves. This is something we need to tell other people about. This is why it's so important we need to get connected with a local congregation, a local body of believers to help grow us, help encourage us, and help challenge our new belief. I know if I didn't have people in my life holding me accountable, that I would have gone wayward a long time ago. But by God's grace, he helped to bring people into my life to encourage me, to help strengthen me. And while I've had a couple different groups of friends throughout my entire life, I've never been without friends that held me accountable and pushed me closer to God. And I want that for you as well. So if you've not taken a time, if you cannot remember a place or remember, if you, if you can't remember the time, that's, I don't remember the time, I re, but, I, but you should remember the place. For me, the place was I was little, I was, I was about five years old, and I was on the top bunk of my bunk bed and I prayed with my dad. If you don't remember a specific place, or if you don't remember the place where you got saved, I'd like to encourage you to make that place wherever you're sitting or wherever you're standing or wherever you're watching today. And my hope is that you don't just stop here. But please reach out to me, comment on the video, go to the Instagram, um, email me, go to the Instagram, send me a message. Please don't just stop at uh, saying this prayer, even if you believe it in your heart. Don't stop there. Continue on so that I can share in that joy with you and so that we, together we can help you find a local congregation so that you can get connected with the local body of Christ. Because these videos, while I enjoy making these videos and I 
and they're in, they they're an encouragement to me. I hope they're an encouragement to you. This is not a substitute for church. These videos are not a substitute even for your own personal Bible study. So I don't want to waste. I don't want to waste your time, or I, I, I don't want you to waste your time by not getting connected with a local body. So reach out to me, and it would be my joy and my pleasure to do whatever I can. If if we're not local, if, if you're local, I'd love to, to connect with you and, and, and help get you connected with a church locally. If, if you're not local, I, again, I would still love to do what I, whatever I can to help you look and find a church that is local to you so that we could get you connected with a local congregation, with a, with a body of Christ, with a body of believers that can hold you accountable. If you'd like to experience this rest, this peace that Peter had, that he could be sound asleep so much that he had to be struck on the side to wake up from that kind of sleep, the night before he was supposed to die, then I'd like you to join me in this prayer. If you'd like the hope that Peter had that gave him the peace and the assurance that when he died, he would not in fact die, but he would become more alive than he had ever been before, then I'd like you to join me in this prayer. Let's bow our heads. And just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I also know that you died on the cross for my sins. I ask today that you would forgive me of my sins and come into my life as my Lord and Savior. I pray that you would be my one true hope in life. Amen. Today, if you've prayed that prayer and not just said the words, but believed them in your heart, then the Bible says, then you are saved. You are a Christian now. I would like to say, formally welcome you to the body of Christ. Again, my hope, please reach out to me. Reach out to the page. If you know of a church, if you know of a local congregation that's maybe some some of its members have been encouraging you to join, my encouragement would be to to accept their invitation and to go join them. But if if you have not had that in your life, please reach out to me and, and let me encourage you and, and help in any way I can to, to find a local body for you to get connected with. Um, as always, I just want to say thank you all so much for watching. I really do enjoy these videos. I, I know this one was a, a little bit longer, but I think it's worth it. I, I really... Because I, I know this is worth it. I believe that this is worth it beyond anything else I do. If you, if you don't ever look at anything else on my website, if you don't do anything else with the rest of your life, this decision is worth it. This is the most important decision that you will ever make with your life. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, this was these these are always something that encourages me. My hope and my prayer is that it's an encouragement to you. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.